I'm going to try to do is create a room. And I want in this room to create a space which is going to allow for different type of thinking to be entertained. That's all I want to start with. And we have done this already in Agile in different ways. We've created a wall to have a different conversation. I mean, it usually goes by the name of Kanban. We've had, we've seen, I've seen all different types. And the whole idea of the, is when you walk to that wall, you're going to look at things slightly differently. It's trying to introduce you to a new perspective. Now, I, I believe that organizations are trying to do the right thing. However, if you're only listening for problems, requirements, certainty, scope, forecast, what you're, when you're listening for these things, it's only when they kind of connect that you react. Right? So I have a problem that the forecast is wrong and scope's gone out of, out of, out of the way. And we have a problem. And straight away, you're zone, zooming in to solve that problem. That is a problem. We have to solve it. Now, I have, a, I have a, an idea, which is when we have been looking at these problems and we haven't solved them forever and we still have that problem, maybe we're just looking at the wrong things. So we've got you know, PMOs doing a, a, re, a reshuffle, a reorg, a re, you know, pinbox two, three, four, you know, the, the new way, the new way of working, the, the new framework, the enhanced framework, the scaled enhanced framework. We have all these language. However, we still have fundamental problems. So what I've, I'm trying to think about is how can we come up with ways to, at a, you know, at any level in an organization, it's not just at an exact level, where we can try to trigger something else. So what I, I see here, and what I see in these words that are being used and rehashed, right? so you know, go into any bank, they only, talk, they only ever say one thing to you, money, 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 dollars, dollars, money, cost, expensive, want make more money. Right? And money is in every conversation. So if I wanted to try and change the perception and see things in a different light, the last thing I want to do and use as an anchor for that conversation is use money. Because that immediately has you know, cognitive reaction to saying, oh, well, we're talking about the same thing. When we talk about that, this is what we talk about. In fact, here's the five point plan of how we solve that problem. So what will happen is that when the, mo the word money comes up and the cognitive bias kicks in, I'm actually going to start listening out for things that I can react to. Or on, or on one of my favorite topics. I just need to set one sentence to be said and then I'm going to do something. So what I'm trying to think about is how can we create a different wall that has different language and I'm going to engineer that language. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and engineer language that's going to try and address a problem. So in SNS right now, we're coming up with this kind of title to this kind of thinking, and we're calling it the lens. And I'm a, I don't know about you, I'll tell you a little bit about me, so I'm, and why I really resonate with this. So I've got, I'm, I'm pretty screwed up. I've got, I've got really bad dyslexia. I actually have, uh, not only dyslexia, I've got, the, I've got the trunk card, I've got Ireland syndrome as well. So I, can't, I can hardly read. It's almost impossible. So I have to use these, these different lenses. So I, I put a lens on top of a page, and then I put wear another pair of glasses. And what I'm trying to do by putting these on is to, dis, is to take the distortion of white light out of my way, so I have a half a chance of looking at something and I'm not so exhausted, so I have to use about 90% of my brain to read. So I like the idea of this lens. And what I'm thinking about is that if I can come up with a, a lens that's to address a certain particular problem, we're just going to call it a lens for now. What I'm going to try and do is say, let's look through this lens and let's see what we see differently. Now, as we know, that if we start to try to take a conscious uh, moment to try and say, I want to observe 
something new in my system, I'm actually going to start finding information that links to that lens. So, rather than looking for the problem, the solution, the scope, maybe what I'm starting to come up with is the opportunity. Maybe if I had a lens, and in that lens I didn't ask for the problem, I asked for the leading indicator. What, is the, what are the, some of the variables that actually lead to a problem manifesting? So it will never be a problem because I'll have already interpreted it from the leading indicator. What would that look like? So frustration. That's usually a, a, a leading indicator of failure. What else? Well, I, I'm thinking about it. I'm, off the top of my head, I would say uh, misalignment. So I want these things now to be the things that are going to create reactions. Okay. And what I want to do is to be getting a point where we'll actually start wondering what does that mean. Have a conversation around that. And in order to have those different types of conversations, I have to try and break the culture of how we try and problem solve. The way we label the problem, the way we label the solution. I want to break away from that. So I like this analogy of a room because when we walk into that room, we're walking in and we're looking at something in a different way. For example, one of the things I say when I'm trying to create a room, when you walk into the room, don't bring your job title. Right? Because I want, I want a senior super duper manager to be able to come into a room and have a conversation with someone who's like five levels down and have parity in that conversation because they're there to try and solve the same problem. and They've been identified as people that help with that problem. The last thing I want is for a person to quote their job title and the decision on top of somebody, because then I don't have diversity of thinking, I just have linear thought. And then it's all based on the person at the very top having the highest IQ that solves all problems for everybody else, and we all just do what we're told. So I've started to realize um, that in this universe that I work within, that the universe co uh, refuses to cooperate when I try to play God. I said, I'm going, to I'm, going to make the, I'm going to make the answer. Actually, I, sometimes I'll even tell you what the answer is. I just need you to repeat it, please. So I want to try and challenge that. And how am I going to do that? Well, what I do know is that if I want to try and make that type of thing happen, I need to start to try and create realization. People have to try to become aware of certain things. There needs to be fewer conversations around the description of tasks and the description of scope. Instead, we have to facilitate a process where we're looking at a greater picture. So this is, a, this is an example of, of a definition of a room, or a lens. We're going to call this the enterprise control room. And this is the lens that I'm going to talk to today. What I have is I've engineered a particular set of topics that I want to try and bring into a conversation. Now, I can tell you, I'm looking at this, there's two kinds of things I'm trying to solve here. One is I'm trying to bust silos. Because if you look in the wording, by visualizing your strategy, you can enter your conversations, develop insights, and collaborate on decisions. So, so I'm, there's no, I'm trying to break hierarchy here, I'm trying to break silos. And how I'm trying to do it is I'm trying to create different forms of dialogue. I'm putting the customer in the middle, not up front, to link strategy to customer, to how we're spending our money, to the insights that we're getting from spending our money, what we're delivering, and are we succeeding. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and create a room that allows for this conversation to flourish. And the answer to that one, oh, yeah, wrong one, looked like this. Now, I don't want to bore you with all of the posters. I can show you them later if you're really excited by them. Um, but what I, I am trying to do is I'm trying to create an environment that has information on it in some kind of logical flow that is counter to how you currently pro solve problems or the current culture of discussion that occurs. For example, so I might take things out of the room. So I won't have something like budget in this room. Because you know how much you're spending. You've got PMO, you've got your big reams of documentation, you've got your spreadsheets, You've got all of that already, so I don't need to try and echo what you already know. I'm trying to amplify what you don't. So this here is an amplification of a master spreadsheet. 
And what I'm able to see here is maybe that's a bottleneck. But what I can see here, and what's a fact in this example, just so you know, uh, this here is uh, the SMS room where we created a company called Iconia Furniture. Because, we, because when we're doing something like this, you can't show dirty laundry of one of your clients, we try to come up with a, a company that we don't work in, in an industry we don't work in. So when we show this type of thing, nobody can start feeling, hey, there's a little bit of me up there. You know? So what we have is we have a set of uh, posters and a set of questions, and you'll see some of this is organic, that tries to link things. And what I, you know, just imagine this is talking about being customer centric. This is talking about serving the customer. And over here, we're doing absolutely nothing about it. So that's a question. I'm going to inquire on that question. Does that make sense? What I'm also going to do is I'm going to have attributes that try and connect the room. So one thing that we do do is we tag these cards with interdependent attributes that relate to what's over here and over here. So that when someone walks into the room, it's not a museum. They look at, oh, this is my project, aren't I wonderful? We're saying, well, is your project answering this? And what is it done to achieve this? Well, well, this actually has nothing. This, uh, these things don't ha have anything to do with this project. So why are we doing it? So what we, we have, we've done an instance of this where what came to light was the level of uh, legacy projects that had nothing actually had nothing to do with the current strategy, but sometimes contradicted it. Now I don't want to get into that. Cons I don't want to get into too much of that detail right now. All I just want to do is to start to share this. Here you go. What we're doing is through the visual stimuli that we're creating in the room, we're just trying to build an experience. And that experience is through visual communications. Now what's cool about visual communication is that you actually see people use those to tell stories. So we're, we're able to start capturing narrative. And that's what we try to actually engineer, is engineering that narrative to something that we're trying to look at. What will, will happen is that maybe there's a theme to the room, and the, the person will try and interpret a poster regard, against the narrative and what they're currently working on. And that has provided very enriched information. Those narratives get repeated. And there's nothing as good as a narrative that came from a COO who said, we really need to think about something, and that being echoed again and again. What we have then is the need to have interaction. So that sounds great. I hear, yeah, I, I looked at it, but I don't see it. I see these posters, I don't see it. Well, I might have to bring ask some, some, some questions. But now with the questions that I'm asking are the ones that I'm asking in order to interpret. So when someone tries to give me the answer, I have no choice but to listen because I asked the question. So we're starting to create a level of tension. We're starting to try and create a level of challenge. Imagine that you're a peer working on two programs in parallel, and we facilitated the conversation. Both of you came into the room. We asked you to, can you articulate your program against what you see? And the two guys start off on the very first poster, which is purely who we are, and they come, come out with two different, complete, different answers. Now, I reckon if we have two complete different answers of who we are, the solutions they create are going to diverge. Which one's right? Who knows? Maybe we don't know ourselves. Maybe we, we have to ask. Maybe we have to bring other people into the conversation. So what we're doing now is we're trying to take the experience of the space, the inquiry and the way in which people perceive data, and what we're going to try and do now is force interaction. So the, the point now is that the poster can't push all of the information down someone's throat can only provide enough information to create an inquiry. It can't tell you exactly what to do. There's a little bit of an art in that, because what we're trying to do is actually agitate and create interaction. Create conversation, facilitate it where it's constructive, get to a point of shared understanding. And shared understanding is a very important one for me, because if I can get to a point of shared understanding, well then there's a, an opportunity to leverage the diversity of thinking. Right. So if we're both trying to do the same thing, or we both want to, to do the, the same outcome, 
well then using that as a leverage point to bring in different information that could be contradictory at least can then be facilitated. However, we've agreed to one point and the visuals help us and what we've noticed is that we're, we're trying to articulate that people are using the room to try and help support their answer. Now what happened was in the, which I'm not quite sure if you noticed, is that there's a table in the middle. The whole idea of the table is that you're going to get to a point of meaningful conversation where more information is required, supportive information is necessary, and focused conversation needs to exist. And the whole idea is that let's have that conversation by first aligning within the room. So what we're trying to do then on the back of that is wait, is um, start to try and alter behavior. So <clears throat> imagine that rather than talking about the PMOs and you know your your status reports, etc. Imagine we just had a room that was purely talking about alignment. How would that be connected? Where would the flows be? And if we're trying to create alignment, what's the behavior that we're trying to change? Well, it'd usually be inclusiveness, being holistic, thinking about what other people are doing, understanding the, the dependencies that you might have that you usually not notice. And then on the back of that, we're kind of linking into some of the, you know, the, the theories of what we're trying to support, which is a little bit boring for today. But all I'm trying to do here, I've got I to stop doing that, it's driving me mad. <laughs> what I'm trying to do here is try to create a room where we're trying to get balance in how people think and how people discuss. So I'm not trying to say, let's get rid of you know, the linear detail and anal analytics and sequential thinking. I'm saying, no, I just want to balance it and have a room that immerses not only that, but the concepts around you know, random, creative, end result, and holistic. Because some of the things that are, some of the best moments in conversation are the things that you couldn't have predicted. They were completely random. What, what was made that occur was the, the facilitation of a particular conversation. You being brought into something that maybe uh, you felt was a waste of time. So how can we try and engineer that and make it organic? So the whole idea of the inquiry is that as people have questions and no one is there to answer them, we'll try to pull other people into that room, pull, pull other people into that conversation, let it become organic. Let the crowd of people required to solve a problem morph into what it needs to be through pull theory rather than saying, all you guys into that room, we're going to have a conversation right now. Uh, gone the wrong way. <coughs> so I'd, I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of what we're doing here. Um, the, the first thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to create these concepts of, of, uh, of interaction. So what are these phases of conversation that we want to have? And like I said, right now I'm talking about one around alignment. So what are the key words that we need to worry about? Where's these lines of interaction that we have to pass? So, <coughs> we're, so this blue area here is what we're talking about is our line of intent, what we're intending on doing. The second line is the line of interaction. How do we interact that intent to our customer, to our people, to anyone who's interested? <coughs> On the back of that, how are we starting to move that into lines of visibility? Okay, so this is what we want to do. This is what we're saying. How is that being seen? How, is that being how will that occur? How will that be driven? On the back of that, we're asking about uh, lines of enablement. Okay, so this is what, these are the things that we can see. How do we know that they're enabling? How do they connect? How can I make a connection between each of those lines? How can I see an, an idea here being transformed and become tangible going through those phases? And the last one is a line of a, a reflection. One of the things that we're trying to do is to allow for tension to occur in the room so that you know, things that are on one side can actually contradict the other, and that's good. <coughs> one of the best parts that I've done is when I created one of these rooms, is uh, we had this area and it was about um, you know, what we've done that was successful. What, what, have, what have we done over the last six weeks that's great? And we said, you know what, let's ask everybody. So we, we created a comms process where we would say anybody can a answer this question. 
uh, give us anything to go on it's good enough we'll stick it in this area and we got nothing back a big zero and uh, the sponsor kind of had a heart panic attack and says you know we're having an ELT meeting in two days and this area has nothing so he says <coughs> let's make something up and I, I kind of said well you know what I'm going to have to fall on my sword before we make something up because you now we're being biased and we it took a long time to convince him that having an area of the room with nothing in it is as good as trying to put something that I said it's better than putting something that's not true and <coughs> the conversation goes that when the, the guys came across that area they said that is a fair reflection of the culture that we're needing to change we're all worried about being busy we're all talking about the problems but we never ever take a moment to consider what we've done that's been good we never give ourselves a pat on the back or nor do we celebrate it so this kind of connects to something uh, that's going to happen next is that that kind of that story gets retold other people hear that story and in fact what we say is that let's change the theme of the room for the next uh, month to let's be conscious about what we have done how can we share with others what we have achieved that was the question that went out to everybody and that was the question that was to be oriented in the room between these different lines and because the language that was, and the stories that related to where that came from were replayed and we actually started to get a, you know, a voice coming from the company and we also started to have um, people share stories that most people wouldn't even know existed in fact we found out that in one group they didn't even know they did that business right? they actually found out well, why didn't we know we did that right? because it was a customer story that we shared what we're going to do then is be depending on whatever choice of problem that you want to solve and whatever way we try to design this type of interaction <coughs> what we're going to do then is look for data attributes that we can pull out of the massive information you have that allows for contradiction in the in the room in SMS uh, we have what basically we have a very customer centric strategy it looks beautiful spend $65 per poster a lot of money for consultancy to spend on just posters for intern use and then we move into program execution and in program execution we created a, a slider of tension which is your program how much of it has been worked on is um, against customer centricity and internal alignment so we, we have this little so in the corner of each poster there's something that looks like this and another color here and what happened was that we found out that when we looked at each of the programs and we added up the sum of customer alignment against internal efficiency we were still focused on internal efficiency so no matter what strategy is being put forward the way in which strategy was being interpreted and executed was reverting back to kind doing the same stuff again yeah love your words but I'm going to just keep on doing what I used to do and we started and that was one of the things that we started to say well hold on we said we're customer centric but we're not doing it so what we did was we started to create attributes of customer and link it to other areas of the room for example in here we have a, every you know key projects are going through an investment value chain and we said okay every single project has to answer in one particular space of the card how it is answering a customer problem we've tagged the problems and what was even more amazing was that 90% of the projects had nothing to do with the customer so what was a gut feel here based on looking at this on our second round and we looked in more detail we're actually seeing that the problem was even bigger so remember what we're trying to do here is then ask ourselves well what's the problem so what we started to do was to facilitate questioning and investigation and everybody said you know it's it's all said here we're doing this for the customer it's really clear you know we've got personas and they're all being explained we've got you know a lot you know we've alignment to business change this is all done and we have we have our benefit realizations that we're trying to make on the back of this 
what what happened was that here the question that was being asked in project startup was not <coughs> how is this answering the customer it was has this project been approved and in the approval process it was never asking anything around that it was something that was being asked as an afterthought so what we're saying is that well the filtering process that's happening at this point here moving idea into uh, a business case is that isn't asking the right question because it's not challenging here and it's not creating tension here so what happened was this started to become a problem and rather than saying here is the solution we, the starting point was what is the question that we should be really asking right here not what's the solution and then see how that filters and what I found was that the answers that were being given back I would never have been able to predict I could not I could not even think up front that this would be the answer that I would hear and the other thing that I could never thought I could predict would be the counter arguments to justify or the justification as to why this is the current reality so you know I'm a bit like uh, I'm a bit uh, technically uh, screwed here because I wanted to use my laptop so I could be organically moving between pictures and presentations and um, I'm happy to I want to let you guys ask questions on this and I'll, if I need to I'll try and do a bit of a, you know, a USB transfer of ideas and to help articulate what I'm saying but what I, I do know and what I do know that's happening as we do this and as we try and engineer this type of dialogue is that we're, we are looking at things that are different we're, what we're, we're doing is that we're using this, this concept or the theme to be turned into a source of power to you know, challenge the way we do things. So the theme of the room, the question or the problem we're trying to ask is actually challenging the cultural norm. It's challenging the way in which we currently make decisions. And the reason why is because these sections of the room are engineered to do that. So whatever the current process mode of operandi is, will be the last thing that will be placed on this wall. Listen, how can we look at it differently? And how can we orchestrate that into the room? And how can people start providing information to support these sections? So the room iteratively grows. Uh, in the Australia Post, we've ha we counted that 170 people have been involved in using, uh, actually creating some aspect on the room. So it's not, you know, it's not controlled by one source. Uh, sometimes what uh, SMS has done is to facilitate, you know, four people come with four different PowerPoints saying we're answering the same question. So what we might try and do then is to try how can we actually take those four PowerPoints, turn them into an infographic, and allow for inquiry to occur on the infographic. We have a, we had a really good one with um, customer customer alignment, which I'll I'll show you in a second. <coughs> but what we're trying to do is to is to allow to allow for influence, not make the decision. So how can we try and influence change by creating a different type of reality? creating a different type of realisation and then do nothing more but allow for that to manifest in what it needs to become rather than not saying uh, so there was, one, there was one SMS consultant who he didn't last very long in this room because his, uh, when he was asked to facilitate uh, a discussion about one of the problems we spoke about he said here is your problem and this is what you must do so think about all of the bias in that story he was using the information to reiterate what he is good at, what he'd like to see happen next. So um, <coughs> we had to we had to explain what he was doing that was wrong. He couldn't see it being wrong, so we actually had to replace because it was just the wrong type of environment that was being recreated. In fact, the last thing it could be is a, a process to show all your dirty laundry and then for some consultant to tell you what the answer is. What we needed to do was to allow for reality to, be, to exist, allow for inquiry to occur on the back of that, allow for the calibration to happen at the rate that's needed in an organisation, and assist where asked. If, we, if you can work in this way, what can happen is you can start to change and move into more of a coherent, coherent entity. You know, you, as, as these things filter and they start to spread back onto the world, and these realisations are being understood. The, the, this you know, artificial dialogue 
starts to become second nature. It starts to be repeated on storyboards, and sprint planning meetings, and sprint prioritization and retrospectives, and release planning, product discussion, and steering committees. And that's the key, is to try and allow for that to start to influence and that to be one, rather than data being the second level of information, that an alternative inquiry being the second level of information. And, th and it seems to be working and we're, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a great kick out of it, I don't know about you, um, and yeah, that's where I'm at. So is there any questions of what I spoke about so far that I can kind of articulate a little bit better? Because I, I gather it's not all clear and like I said, you're helping me try and articulate this a little bit so is, is the left hand wall, um, is this requirements or user requirements, projects on the back end, and is this Sure. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so it all the, first of all, it all depends on the problem you're trying to solve. So if this was a corporate problem, well, the requirements wouldn't be a corporate, wouldn't be there. If this was a, a room for a program, well, features would definitely be part of it. So the batch size that's being used in the room has a, is directly related to the area of focus that you're looking for. So the way I look at it is the you know is you're dropping down the microscope to look lower, well the batch size has to be different. For, so I've done it for features so sort of in a program and the features were about sixty grand each. And when I did it in Australia Post, it was a three million dollar entity. I spend a lot of money right now. So, so it was a different type of batch. So if the question is what problem you're trying to solve, where does that lie in the organization, and then what batch size suits that to create the tension that you need? So um, one of the realities was the, the problem with the customer, but the actual culture of focusing only on resource efficiency and money yes. is actually a reality too. So that is true. If, if your buyer's going in, do you bring it back? To yeah, of course. Market? Yeah. So I mean. Right, remember, this is trying to create inquiry and influence. So, you know, and we're trying to only do it in a room to start with. Because if we said you have to do it everywhere, we know it wouldn't happen. But to say, you know what, for one hour of your week, which has been mandated by your boss, by the way, we're asked, we're being, you've been asked to come into a room and reorientate yourself around your role by looking in a different light. Yeah. Now, what you do after that, I can't afford you. But for that hour, can you just give it a go? Now, sometimes when that person is asked to provide an artifact or information to support the room, that's a second level of realization to say, well, okay, what, what do I have to provide out of my program that relates to what's been asked of me? And, so we, and if they're the only two, well, it's a better and it's a good starting point because it's not realistic to say, can you change overnight, please? Mm -hmm. Don't ask that question anymore. Ask this one instead. It won't happen that way. So we have to, we have to allow for influence and transformation change to happen in a, in a little bit more of a softer nature. Martin, what's the kind of assignment that you're rolling when you bring this in? Okay, um, so I qualify that an assignment has to be based on the, the, the organization or team or program being able to admit they have a problem. Right. So if, if someone says, no, you know, we're perfect, our methodology is working, we're great, well, I'm, I'm not, I don't, you, don't, you don't need this. If you're great, you're great, you might just keep doing it. So the, the, there's a couple. So the one that seems to be prevalent in uh, public services is um, misalignment and uh, legacy spend. So trying to, to do that. And what we're not trying to do is to do an audit on spending. What we're trying to do is say, well, the, the value of the company is this. Where it's, what it's trying to achieve over the next three years has been here. How are we answering that? And then we'll find a lot of the other, you know, a lot of the other day-to-day -day conversations not being brought into that room. And then the question is, are we focusing on the wrong things? The the, the second one, uh, so the other, second one's been innovation. We want to we want to be you know, cool out there. But, but you know, when we're we're so busy doing our day-to-day. We just need you to help do that. And the, you know, give us, you know, what does innovation look like? And then how can we use the room to do project ideation? And how can we use the, pro the room to do project inception or agile discovery or whatever other language you're using? They, they seem to be two of the common ones. And uh, the ones I'm trying to avoid, which is, hey, you know, this room 
could really make me look good and get all my peers embarrassed. I actually, there's a promotion on the back of this for me. So what we try to make sure is that the, the room can't link to the KRAs of any one individual. Uh, and that can, that can be a little bit problematic. So what seems to happen is that for, you know, when somebody wants a room, it seems to be the person above them that is either going to buy it or is going to say yes. Because that person is probably the wrong person to spend. We seem to be finding that the realization has to turn into a bit of an entity. And um, there's a the Department of Human Services, we've, we've kind of brought, been brought up to the top three directors. One director's come in, the next director would like to see it, and they reckon that those two directors then can influence the other to say, we need it. And then they'll go to the CEO and say, we need it for us. Uh, and then we'll, you know, and then bring their director corps in to help build the room and to try and create that momentum. Is there any technical questions or is there any is there anything that you'd like to ask? Otherwise, I have an idea of a picture to show you to show some way in which we trigger inquiry. Is yes? The process of creating the room? Yeah. Um, so the, pro the process that we go through is that we have a, a, a two to three day workshop, which is to let's, address, let's agree to which is the problem and the question that we want to ask. Then we will turn that into let's create a, some, for, some form of value chain that links to that. We will then go away and try to say, here's a design of a room that we would like on the basis of doing that. And then we'll find out well, who in the, in the organization can help give that information. Where do we need assistance? We try and create the right balance of team for a 90-day period to go through three iterations of building the room. It looks really crude at the start. You don't spend the $65 on posters for a period until you know, they're right. <laughs> and, uh, because yeah, you know, pulling down six five dollar posters every day would get the expensive. Uh, and the other thing is that you know what you're trying to do is to allow for um, buy-in. So if I have it really dodgy on post-its, and I ask for your feedback on that, well, it's easy just to add another post-it to it. When we then we'll turn it into PowerPoint, say does that kind of still look nice? And then we'll start think, bring about bringing the infographics in. And every time we're trying to get feedback from a, gr a group. Because it takes about 30 or 40 people to say, you know what, that looks right, to be able to stop some guy coming in and going, that's bullshit, let me just pull that down. And say, you know what, that's your form of reality, but you know, 40 other people have agreed to this, so we probably need to have a conversation. We found it needs to be around 30 or 40 people to stop that you know, big egomania coming in and ripping something down. So how do you, like, so the momentum of change is really important in yeah. Well, um, you know, the first of all is the message. So usually people are responsible for the message. So for example, when it comes to something about the customer, there's usually a group called customer experience. And there's another group, you know, in architecture that's involved and saying, guys, does this pi picture, is it good a representation of what both of you are about? And usually they say, I don't like that word, can you change it with this word? And then we'll say, okay, that's great. And we'll then maybe bring in, say, the CEO, you know, our sponsor or someone at a, you know, a higher level and say, do you believe this is a representation of what you think the organization is doing? The answer is no. Well, what's, you know, what's missing or what needs to change? And then does that change become action or is that just a refinement? I don't know, but I will facilitate that. Usually, when you start off with a problem it, and organically try and build a problem. Remember, other people are coming in the room to be speaking nosies and see what's going on here. And if they see something, hey, what's that about? I think I see myself in there. That will drag them into the, the co-creation. So that, because what we're trying to do is that when we get to a point where we have something that's visual, that there's a lot of fingerprints on, everyone can say there's a bit of me. And that's what's kind of needed in order to be able to allow for tension to be built. Yeah. You know, the problems change quite regularly and rapidly. Yeah, they don't really. The, there's the core problem, the core emphasis seems to last for between three and six months. They don't change that fast. Because if they change every day, you have no idea. So you shouldn't be doing anything until, you should, be, you should stop doing everything if you're changing that quickly. So we, uh, we have arguments that, you know, these lines. So there's different rates of cadence for each one of these. And, we're, and our view is if your line of intent 
is changing regularly when you should stop. So the cadence should get faster as you go around. Okay, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll find a, a picture to show, just to show you an example. Um, and it, it's my favorite. So. And, it, and I'll, I'll explain why. Uh, just so you know, if, if anybody's really interested to see the, the next level of detail, I'm happy to, to bring you, you know, down to SMS and walk you through the room and, and see it for real and, and uh, you know, put a, vis a visual that's more than just what I'm sh doing, which is showing concept. Uh, this is trying me because I thought it was going to be so much easier. Uh, I've, got, I've got all my photographs over here. So one t the other thing that's really powerful is doing is taking a time series photograph of how the room evolves and actually seeing how the, the, the question changes. Um, that's been quite powerful. And we've uh, that has been that also has been a major learning for organisations to say, you know, this is this actually is starting to make sense, or I'm I'm starting to see the power. Uh, here. Martin, yes. Is it possible to post any of these pictures? You can attach them to your lab. Yeah. Page I'll do that. Yeah, I, I, I can only post. The only problem is I can only show the ones that aren't the companies, and um, so that, and that's the reason why I've, we've come up with this uh, this you know fake organisation so we can share. And I'm happy to do that. So I'll definitely share th this one. Yeah. And it's also great time now, so um, fine. Okay. Sorry, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> So here we have an image. This image here is showing uh, basically strategic themes and how those strategic themes are, are trying to basically have macro strategies. What we have here is the colors here are linking to the, to the strategic themes from a customer perspective. And what we did, why we did this was because we wanted to show there's an awful lot of overlaps and overlines and that had a major complexity in business change. So if I now have to zoom. There you go. Uh, it, it was it was over there. I saw it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that scrolling when I do that? Uh, it's not working that way. So here, so what you'll uh, here you go. So yeah, so here, so what you'll see here is that there's an awful lot of overlaps, and that's what, so we had all of these lovely PowerPoints saying how we're going to do lots of different things for our customers, and we said, well, that's not what we need to echo. What we need to try and amplify is the level of of crossover, and what was really powerful here was this that this poor unfortunate persona had every single strategic theme saying it was going to deliver to it. So could you imagine how confused that customer could become if it wasn't managed? And, and, that, and we didn't say that was the problem. We just tried to infer it and see what people said and how they reacted to it. And they, it created, it's created this, this example has created really good uh, conversation. So uh, thank you. I, I know we went over, so I really appreciate your time.